Today we are going to be rebuilding the top cover of a T18 transmission. This is a pre-1979 model with the steel forks. First thing you want to do is go ahead and punch out those expansion plugs that are on the end. There's three on each end. Some of these lids only have three on one end and it's just a solid cast on the opposite, but most have three on each end. Uh, every once in a while when you're trying to drive these out they'll get kind of stuck so once you get it started you'll have to kind of pry it out and it should come free uh, it's kind of an odd angle to use a small punch there but you can do it up next you want to use a small punch to drive out these slotted spring pins uh, i like to start with the big one two fork just to get it out of the way uh, once this the pin is out you'll have to drive the rail forward a little bit to get the fork off and you just want to make sure you put it back in the neutral position. From here we'll go to this middle 3-4 fork. It has to come out of the way before you can drive the pins out of the other two. So once the pin is out then you can go ahead and use a rod or a small punch to drive the rail out. You just want to make sure that you cover up that uh, hole there because there's a detent ball that is spring loaded and if you're not careful it will shoot out and go across the room or hit you in the face so just make sure you're aware of that then you can go ahead and just drive this rail all the way out and your fork should just come right up right out the top once that rail is out we can go ahead and drive out the remaining two spring pins here and they should come out relatively easy and once they're out you can go ahead and just drive out these other two rails one thing to note on these is that uh, this is the pre-1979 top cover so the they have the cast iron forks and there is not the bulge in the side for the reverse so just keep that in mind if you're if you have the bulge on the side of the top cover it's a later model and you have the aluminum forks and they just are a little bit different once these rails are out we can go ahead and remove the interlock pills and all the detent springs uh, there's a spring in the bottom of each one of these three holes you can use a small punch or a magnet to get those out and then to get the interlock pills they're a little bit trickier they're horizontal in between each of the rails there's two of them and you just kind of have to poke it to one side and try and grab it with your fingers or a small magnet sometimes helps but it doesn't always have the strength to pull them out so i found using the small punch to kind of get them started or a 90 degree pick works great that's all there is to it so here we're going to go and get it cleaned up and we'll come back with a rebuild. Generally want to lay everything out so you can kind of see what you got going on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the reverse rail. This is the one with the notch in the side. And uh, I like to just get it in there and get it started. And then we'll go ahead and put each of the three springs in the bottom here. Uh, you can put them in before, drive, uh, before starting that rail, but just make sure that they are in. Once the springs are in, we're going to go ahead and try and put these interlock pills in. Uh, same way they came out, there will be one that goes in between the reverse rail and the 3-4. So the reverse is that one farthest away from me, and 3-4 is that middle one. And the other one will go in between the 3-4 and the 1-2. Sometimes it can help to put a little bit of oil or grease on these. Uh, I'll sometimes use an engine assembly lube. Just make sure you have one going forward and one going back. Once those interlock pills are in and the springs, we can go ahead and push this detent ball down. I use a punch and just kind of push that rod through. Sometimes they can be quite a challenge and it takes many tries to try and get them together, but just stick with it, you can do it. With this reverse lug, that plunger side goes towards the, towards the middle where your shift lever will be and the machine flat goes on that sliding portion of the lid. Once you get that rail through, you want to make sure it goes to that neutral position so it'll kind of snap to that spot using the detent. And just make sure it's all the way in neutral. The 3-4 rail is next. Uh, this one has a pin that goes in the hole on the two interlock uh, detents. Make sure that pin is there. If you don't have it in there, it 
can be shifted into two gears at once and lock up your whole transmission. So just make sure that's there. It is crucial to the interlock. Um, here I'm putting in this ball. And again, same thing. You just kind of push it down in there, get the rail started, and then you can smack the rail the rest of the way through. With this fork, the uh, fork portion goes away from where the one, two fork would be. So it just goes to the opposite edge of the case. And you just get it started on the rail and drive it the rest of the way through. And here again, just make sure that this rail is in neutral or else you won't be able to get the last rail in. So you'll have one detent spot. You just want to drive it lightly past that to the middle one. And you can feel in here if it's actually in neutral. This one wasn't. Um, so I had to get it in the rest of the way. If that interlock pill is intruding in this in the cylinder here, then it's not in neutral. You have to go to the next position. Sometimes you got to play with it. Uh, just get it back and forth until that interlock pill is flush with the sidewall of that cylinder. And same thing with this one. This one, two lug, just make sure that the slot where the shift lever goes is inboard. And you can go ahead and push that rail through. And then you'll have to go uh, through a few of the detent positions on this one in order to slide the one, two fork on. You just kind of go until you can fit that fork in there and slide it over the end. Once you get that fork started, you can go ahead and start putting all your spring pins in. There's no real order that these have to go in when they're being installed. I like to start with this one, two fork so that uh, we have a little bit more control over that rail when we're trying to drive in the other pin on that one, two lug. But you don't have to do that. You can, you can use any, any order. Um, I have a punch here with a sleeve on it to get it started. It makes it a little bit easier. Kind of helps hold that pin in when you're starting it. That's not necessary. You can do it just holding it with your fingers or a pair of pliers and then drive it the rest of the way in with a punch once you get it started. Uh, this just makes it a little bit easier. When you're driving these pins in, you want to go ahead and make sure that they're flush with the uh, outside portion of these uh, these forks and uh, shift lugs. Sometimes the the lugs don't line up quite right with the rails, and so the spring will uh, feel like it's bottomed out before it's all the way through. You just want to go ahead and make sure that it is flush with the outside, so that you are all the way through the fork. Once all the spring pins are in, uh, you can go ahead and just put these expansion plugs in. Uh, just make sure that your rails are all in neutral and you don't have any of them sticking out the ends here. They shouldn't at this point, but just, just double check that. And then when you're driving these in, you want to use a uh, blunt punch or rod. Nothing real small and sharp as you can actually puncture these plugs. and so. What you'll do is you'll just set them in there and, and get this blunt punch and centered on there and give them one or two solid wax just so you get a little bit of a, a concave going on. Make sure it mushrooms out that edge and that they are fully seated. And go ahead and do the other side and that's all there is to it.